With a more open-ended art dare, I find that brainstorming is super useful. I like to start it with a mind map, where I throw down any idea that spills out of my head. So I begin with the main theme, which in this case is your future self, and then I start by branching out into more particular categories. So for example, what's inevitable, what's likely, what I wish would happen in the future. And I find that in this process, one idea really leads to the next. And before I know it, I've got tons of different examples for all of these categories that are right in front of me that I can step back and choose from to think about what I want my final piece to look like. I'd like to see you make your own mind map. If you just do the mind map, just that brainstorming process, that counts as doing the art dare. I hope you'll find that useful in jumpstarting your process. After making my mind map, I scan the mind map and I pick some ideas that I think have potential. I'm choosing what my life would be like if I had to live alone and if I developed arthritis. I start next by making a list of images that I think are related to both topics. For example, the idea of living alone makes me think about eating meals by myself at an empty dining room table at home. I think about how tiny my grocery list would be having to shop for only one person, and also the thought of eating out at a restaurant by myself on a Saturday night. Next, I create small thumbnail sketches for these images. I always start my thumbnail sketches by drawing a literal rectangle so that I'm a lot more conscious of how I compose my image. Composition is my main priority when I create a thumbnail sketch because I'm really concerned about the placement of my subject within the page. I like to explore two completely different ideas so that I have many more options. The second idea I'm pursuing is this thought of having arthritis in the future. As an artist, I worry about not being able to draw and how my drawings would change if I had arthritis. So I observed my left hand and drew it in a sequence where you have a hand that has a very tight grip that eventually loosens and then you can see in the drawings the form of the hands gradually deteriorates to the point where my drawing style completely falls apart and the hands are unrecognizable. Next, I think about the format that I want for the drawing. I'm thinking that since my image is sequential, I want to start by using a tall rectangle. And so I start thinking about what direction the image should move in. Should it be top to bottom? Should it be left to right? I draw very quick sketches where I can visualize where I would place the hands in the context of this tall rectangle. I've decided to use the arthritis idea for my final drawing because I feel that the image I came up with for living alone was too obvious and literal, and I like this image a lot more of the hands because it's more open to interpretation. For me, every drawing I do always begins with a gesture drawing, no matter how much time I spend on it. I always make sure I keep my thumbnail sketches pinned on the easel right next to my drawing as I draw. Keeps me thinking about placement and composition, which I had worked out earlier in my thumbnail sketches. Since my entire composition is made out of hands, I can easily pose my left hand into the position that I need and then use my right hand to draw at the same time. I'm using white contact crayon on black paper, which can sometimes make you feel like you're drawing with your brain inside out. I think that most people are used to using a dark drawing material on white paper, so drawing like this sort of makes you feel like you're drawing in reverse. Because I did so much brainstorming and sketching beforehand, I can work on the final drawing without any distractions. All of my compositional choices have been worked out, I know exactly what my idea is, and it makes my drawing process so much faster and efficient. When I draw, it's really important to me that I maintain a really fast pace. This is so that I can be a lot more efficient with my marks, but it's also part of creating a very particular mindset for myself where I'm not tempted to fuss over tiny little details and I'm not thinking too much. I think sometimes thinking too much when you draw is actually a big distraction. I think what's more important for me is that I'm really alert and that I'm really reacting to the marks that I'm making at the time. I think about it almost like as if I were running a sprint where you're running as quickly as you possibly can and it's just this sort of physical reaction that's occurring as you draw and there literally is no time to think at all. Drawing for me is such a physical process. I think a lot of people think that drawing is only about your fingers because that's what's physically touching your drawing tool. But for me, drawing goes all the way up into my arms, into my shoulders, to the point where I really sort of feel like I'm engaging with the drawing with my entire body. I think a lot of people think about drawing from direct observation as a very boring academic exercise. But for me, drawing from direct observation is such a powerful experience because when you have your subject right in front of you, it's like you get to get your hands on the primordial soup of the subject. 
What I do when I draw from direct observation is I'm searching for raw visual information that captivates me. So for example, in my hand, I'm really attracted to the way the knuckles protrude under the surface of the skin. I pick and choose what fascinates me. I don't draw everything I see. In fact, there's so much that I see when I'm observing that I intentionally leave out. In the beginning stages of the drawing, I really feel like my eyes are kind of glued to the subject. In fact, I'm usually looking at my subject more than I'm looking at my drawing. But as I move along, I find that I need the reference less and less and less, so that eventually I'm sort of occasionally glancing at the subject, and then ultimately I'm not looking at the subject at all, and I'm really starting to evaluate the drawing on its own terms. Once I'm past the initial setup of the drawing, the challenge of the process is to resist the temptation to linger in one spot of the drawing for too long. Once you're starting to really work deep into some of the details of the piece, I think it's really easy to forget that you still have to take under consideration the entire composition of the drawing. Drawing, I think, is so much about relationships. It's about how one part of the drawing relates to another, and if you're only working on one area and totally neglecting the others, it's so easy for your drawing to fall apart and become fragmented. I try to combat this by making sure that I'm constantly stepping back, looking at my drawing from a distance, so that I'm really conscious of the entire composition and how the area that I'm working on is going to affect the other parts of the drawing. The deeper I got into this drawing, I started to give up control of my marks, and I let the marks become much more chaotic and loose. Given that this drawing is about my fear of eventually losing my drawing skills to arthritis, I thought this process was quite appropriate. One of the best parts of art school for me was getting an assignment in a class and watching how each of my peers would respond in a completely different way. I felt like as an art student, I learned just as much from seeing my peers and their work and their creative process as I did for my professors. Even though art prof is not a physical classroom, our art dares really are kind of another version of this experience of a group of people collectively working together on a similar prompt and yet everybody giving their own individual interpretation. I've been working as a professional artist for many years now, and it's really rare that I'll do a single drawing that isn't within the context of a larger body of work. Most of the time when I'm making work, it's to create several pieces that are gonna go in a series that will be exhibited eventually. So this art dare was really refreshing for me because it was kind of this isolated moment in my work schedule where I really had this opportunity to play an experiment in a way that I don't usually get to do.